Hi, my name is James Dwyer. Uh, this is a presentation for COT5405 on a Uconan's algorithm. Um, Uconan's algorithm is a method to construct a suffix tree, but first we need to know what a suffix tree is and what it can do. Uh, it's a type of tree data structure. Um, it's basically a compressed suffix tri. Uh, and it's a variant of a, a Patricia tri, which is a type of radix tree, and we'll see what both of those are in a moment. And it's important because it represents all the suffixes of a given string. So why we want to use it is it takes up linear space. And let's say you have a very large text. Well, there's some operations that you can do, such as searching for a substring, whether it exists, that you can do linearly in proportion to the length of the string that we're, or substring that we're searching for. Uh, so rather than searching a huge uh, text, once we've constructed our, our suffix tree, we can find uh, what we're looking for in proportion to a relatively small, much smaller string comparatively. Um, so to give you an example of what that looks like real quick, over here, here's a suffix try, and it represents all the subjects for bananas. B N A N A S, A S A N A S, etc. And here is a suffix tree for bananas as well. Uh, you'll notice some differences. The first thing you may notice is that this has fewer nodes than, than the suffix tri does, and that's part of its linear space. This has uh, quadratic space. A tri takes up quadratic space. Um, you'll also notice that on some of these branches, it's like we've combined them to just make a string. Uh, and that's, that's useful. We can do that. Uh, in fact, that is what a radix tree is. Uh, we took this try right here, this branch, this edge B, and this edge A, and this edge N, and said, well, since there's nothing really unique about these as far as branching off in different directions, why don't we just make this single branch one, one edge, bananas? I mean, it's not going anywhere else, so just make it one. And that's the idea of a radix tree. Uh, also, you'll notice the leaf notes look different, and this is what really makes the suffix try special, is that if you travel to a leaf node, each leaf node represents a unique suffix, and the numbers in the leaf node corresponds to the index in the, in the string where that suffix begins. So, bananas is the start. And yep, yeah, it starts at position one, that's, that's true. Uh, what about N-A-N-A-S? Well, it says it starts at three, position three, N-A-N-A-S. Okay, so you can see that that works, okay. What is this dollar sign doing here? Well, when we go through Conan's algorithm, you'll see that if we don't have a special character at the end, then the algorithm will not finish properly. It will just stop and it won't be correct. So you need a special character so that the tree gets constructed properly. So what are some applications of this? Well, one application is string matching. We kind of talked about that already. So let's say you're given a text T and you want to find whether T contains a smaller string S. Okay. Obviously this could be useful in something like a large literary work or, you know, when you're control Fing something in Microsoft Word, looking to see if, if a word you had is contained in there. Um, also in DNA, if you have a huge billions of characters uh, DNA string and you're just looking for a pretty small sequence, this will help you identify that sequence, whether or not that sequence is contained in that DNA uh, pretty quickly, um, proportional to the the size of the sequence you're searching for. So how do we do that? Well, first we need to construct a suffix tree from T uh, and using some method. So we're gonna 
pre-process it. Then we traverse the tree according to the string S, which is the string we're looking for. If we fall off, meaning we haven't found it before we've exhausted all the characters in S, then there, it must not be in the tree, so there's no match. If we exhaust S, then S is a substring of T. If we then want to report the indices where that match occurs, we can traverse the subtree to the leaf nodes. All right, we'll look at an example of this in just a second. Uh, the existence of S and T can be done in the order of the length of S time, as we've said. And then if you want to do the number of occurrences or indices, that will take order of S or uh, the number of occasions of S time. Occurrences, sorry, occurrences of S. Uh, so let's see, if we use our little bananas example here. Okay, whoops, let's see. <clears throat> let's pick a string that would not be in bananas. So let's say N A R. Well, we start at the root and we're looking for N. Well, there's N and we're looking for A and there's A. We've gotten to the end of this string here, so we go to this node. So that's our N, that's our A. Now we need an R. So we look, is there an R down here? Nope, no R. So NAR must not be in this string. Let's try one that is in the string. Let's say ANA. -A. Well, we start at the root, we see A, we go down to its node, the, the, the node that it connects to. Then we're looking, so we've done A, and now we need to do N and A. Well, there's N and A, we come down here. Since we didn't fall off the, the tree, we know that A and A is contained in bananas. Now let's say you were curious as to how many or, or, or where they were. Well, we just explore the subtree of the node that we ended up on. So if we go down here, we see that there is one suffix that starts at four and one suffix that starts at two. And you can see if you look at two, the suffix ANA, NAS, dollar sign contains ANA, and the suffix starting at four, ANAS, dollar sign, also contains ANA. Notice also that it doesn't matter that these two uh, substrings overlapped, they both contain this A, it doesn't matter, they're still two separate substrings. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So what's the time complexity? How can we say, how can we show that it is this OS time? Okay. <clears throat> because of, by design, uh, the paths to the leaves of a suffix tree are unique. So given that, finding a match requires at most the length of S times order one comparisons. We basically have to go through whatever length is. So if we were given A and A, the length of S is three, and we have to do those comparisons. Is this an A? Is this an N? Is this an A? So and those comparisons take constant time, and it's whatever the length of S is. Okay, what if we wanted to report the indices? Well, we still have to find a match just like we did, so that's order of S, order of the length of S. And then we need to report the counts, which means that we visit every leaf node in the subtree from that node. Well, how many internal nodes could there be? Well, they all have at least two children, so if every leaf is a number of occurrences of S, there must be at most that number of occurrences minus one internal nodes. Okay. At each node, we're not making a comparison, the, comparison this time because we're simply just traversing the subtree. I mean, even if we were, it'd still be constant time. But so at most we could have uh, the number of leaf nodes and then which is the number of occurrences, uh, and number of occurrences minus one, that just makes this entire process O of size of S or the number of occurrences. Okay, okay. What's well, another application? Longest repeated substring. Okay, again, useful in DNA. You have our super huge text that we've pre-processed into a suffix tree. Uh, and you want to find the longest string that is repeated in that. Useful for finding like little snippets of DNA that, that you might be interested in. Okay, 
So like before we construct this suffix tree, we pre-process it. We traverse the tree and we track the internal node with the largest string depth, which is the longest string created if we concatenate the edges from the root to that node. The string created from this concatenation is the longest repeating substring. Time takes O of N, where N is the size of the text. Okay. The original text that we're given. Okay. So why does this work? And we'll see an example again in just a second. By construction, all the internal nodes have more than one outgoing edge. And each outgoing edge represents a suffix containing the string created up to that internal node. Thus, the string from root to internal node occurs more than once. Okay. What that basically tells us is Every internal node has, must have two edges leaving it. Which means that up until this point, this, there are two suffixes that contain all the, all the characters that occur up until this, this particular point where it branches off. So all we need to do is traverse all the nodes, keep track of the longest concatenated path, and uh, up to an internal node and then we'll know what the longest repeating substring is. So let's let's try. Let's just see here. If we go from left to right, we'd have A and then it splits. Okay. Well A uh, A is definitely repeated more than more than once. So that's length one. Remember we're concatenating now. A N A. Okay, and then it splits again. So that must be repeated. So A and A, that's length three. Let's see, A and A, A and A. Okay, it's repeated, that's length three. Let's go to the next one, N A, and then it splits. So it must occur more than once. That's true, N A, N A. But that's only length two, so it's not the longest. And then none of these split. Also, obviously, we, we don't count the root for this. Okay, so, the longest repeated substring is A N A. Okay. Okay. So what's the time complexity? All right. There are N plus one suffixes because there's a suffix that begins at every character in the text up to length N, but there's also the appended dollar sign at the end. So there's N plus one suffixes. Every leaf represents a unique suffix. Since every internal node has at least two children, there are at most n internal nodes. Thus, the size of the tree is order n. If we then traverse the tree and track the longest repeating substring, we have to visit each node in the tree, but we perform constant work. We just see how long that string is, and that's it. So, the complexity to find the longest repeating substring is order n. All right, okay. So those are some useful uses for a suffix tree, but how are we gonna build this thing? Well, the first thing way we can do it, we can do like we saw on in the beginning there where we build a try and then we just kind of compress the edges. So for bananas, we see that we have a B and A and N and A and S and then compress it. Well, the problem with that is that we have to build a try in the first place that takes up quadratic space and uh, it also takes quadratic time to do that. Okay, so what if we started with the longest suffix and then inserted the second longest and et cetera, keeping the edges compressed? Well, that's, that's nice. It'll take order m space, but we still have to insert all those characters. It would take m squared time because we're starting from the largest suffix to the smallest. Okay, well, there's a few different algorithms that can do the construction in linear time. Wiener and McCrate, but we're looking at Yukonin's algorithm. And we want to know why, why, what makes that special. So this was proposed by Esko Yukonin in 1995. And it's an improvement on the Wiener and McCrate algorithms because it is linear for constant size alphabets. If you have a variable size alphabet, it's in log n. Uh, but it has online construction, which is, makes it really powerful. What, what does that mean? It uh, picture like a character stream. You have characters coming in. You can look at the first character and you process them as they come in and add them to the, to the tree. Now the tree is not finalized until it sees that terminating character, that final character, that unique character. 
but it can add stuff to the tree as it's getting the string. So you don't have to have the entire sequence from the beginning. You can construct it each time. So how does it work? Okay, first things first, we're gonna, we're gonna be stepping through this. We're gonna start at step one. We're starting at the first character. We're gonna do some number of operations for the first character, some number of operations for the second character, third character. Each character is a step. And by the time we get to the end, we will be done. Okay. We're gonna be stepping through an example of bananas na. Now why bananas na? Well, because I did all these slides with bananas and when I got towards the end, I realized we weren't going to see two examples of two special steps that we need to take. So I added the letters NA on the end so that we would. Okay. <clears throat> Remember the string has to end in a unique character. In this case, we're using a dollar sign, okay? So we're gonna start with a root node. So we insert a root node. Here we go. Okay. We're on step one. The root node is done before step one begins. It's, okay. We need to insert a B as an edge ending at a leaf. So we insert an edge labeled B and it ends at a leaf. And what is this, does this one mean? Well, we told you earlier, it is the index that you can find the suffix. Notice we're pretending that because we're processing these as we see them, we're pretending we don't know anything about the rest of these letters. We only think there's a B. So as far as we're concerned, the only suffix is B, and it starts at one. Okay, that's easy enough. Hold on a second though. If, if we're gonna represent these edges as strings, that means, I mean, think about the DNA. One of those strings is gonna be three billion characters long. Well, how are we gonna do that? That doesn't seem very space efficient. And, and there is a space efficient way we're gonna, we're gonna do this. Not only, the, not only could they be long, but they could be different sizes. So we're going to use pointers. We're gonna use indices to label these edges. Uh, and this is actually what a Patricia try does. They label the edges with indices. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, we have a one. Basically we have a start index and a stop index. The start index is always going to be an integer, like a literal, integer literal. The stop position will either be an integer variable or a literal integer. And we'll see why this is an I. Okay, so real quick. So what are we looking at here? Why do we wanna do this? Okay, how does this save space versus the string? Well, every edge, no matter how big a character represents is represented by two integers. So even if you had a three billion character long thing that represented the entire DNA sequence, it is only represented by two integers. So we have a constant sized edge for any edge in, in a tree we make. So that's useful, that's good. That means anything we do on it is going to be constant. Okay, so let's see. So we have constant size edge, that's good. What does this I represent? Okay, remember how we're, how we're on step one. I is gonna keep track of what step we're on and the step is whatever character we're on. So what this is telling us is that this edge represents the character from one to I and I is currently one, one to one. What's the character, what's the suffix that goes from one to one? B, well there you go, this represents B. Okay, that's easy enough. That seems to make sense. Let's keep going. Okay, we put the B in there. That's good. We're on step two. Okay, so now I is two and the character is A. Okay. The second step and every subsequent one, subsequent one, one of the first things we're gonna, we're gonna do is append the current character to each existing edge. So remember how we had this edge here that had a B on it? Well, now it gets appended with an A. Now that seems like it would take some work. However, because the fact that these are represented by two integers and I is now two, we actually didn't have to append anything. 
this now edge now says it goes from one to two. Well, what's one to two? One to two, B, A. We didn't have to change this label at all. It automatically just put that letter on there. Okay, well, that's, that's definitely a time saver. That's helpful, okay. All right, so what are we doing here? Okay, so we look here, we're at the root. We look here, we did this the first step too, but it was a little obvious because there were no nodes inserted yet. So we look here, I'm gonna use this right here because it's easier to tell what letter we're looking at. And we need to insert an A. Remember this guy's not here yet. And we say, what's here? There's just a B. This starts with a B. So there is no edge that begins with A, so we just insert an edge with A and where A starts, the current I, which is two. Notice that we're not actually inserting the, the letter. Remember, we're, it's, the algorithm sees this. It doesn't see a letter, it sees these indices, okay? Okay, we did a successful insertion. Okay, so what's next? I is three, step three. Okay, we're on the N. It's done the same way as before. We look, do any of these edges begin with an N? Let's go back up here. Do any of these edges begin with an N? No. So we're gonna to need to insert an edge that begins with N. But before that, an N gets appended to every existing edge. And we see that automatically happens because now we're on step three. So this goes from one to three, which is B-A-N, and two to three, which is A-N. And then we inserted this edge at position three, three, two, three which is in. Okay, all right. Okay, from now on, we're only going to look at this representation of the tree, only because it's easier to see the letters and understand them than to see these indices all the time. But just remember that the indices are what the algorithm uses, it's what the program sees. Okay, step four. Uh-oh, step four, we need to insert an A. B, A, N, A, okay. But we already inserted an A earlier, so what are we gonna do? Well, this whole time, actually, there have been two additional variables that have been operating behind the scenes, remainder and active point. Remainder is just an integer, and it tells us the amount of suffixes we are waiting to insert. At the beginning of every step, it is automatically incremented because we're on a new suffix, the new, the new character and we're gonna to have to insert it. So that always increments it by one at the beginning of a step. Then if we successfully insert a suffix during a step, we decrement the remainder by one. And we'll talk about what we later on why we would need to decrement and what a successful insertion looks like. Okay. The other variable is active point. It's made up of three things, active node, which is whatever node of interest we're looking at. In, in the default case, it's root. Active edge is the edge of interest that's leaving the active node. The default is null because we're not looking at an edge uh, that leaves. Um, and then active length is how far into the string on the active edge are we looking? And the default zero, because as we notice when we start, there is, you're just looking at what the edge starts with. You're not looking into an edge. Okay, so the reason why this has always been around, the, the default, the, the active node has been root. The active edge has been null because there hasn't been an active edge. We're not actually looking at a certain edge. We're looking at all the edges that leave the root. And the active length is zero, meaning that the active point is actually right behind the first letter of each of these. Okay, so when we're looking we use the active point to decide where we need to insert a suffix. So we'll see what, how that's useful in just a second here. Okay, remember, so now I is four, we're on A. A is a repeat. Uh, incrementing I to four means that A is automatically appended. We see that. There it is, Banna, Anna, and Na. So we're at the active point, which is root, null and uh, zero, active length zero. Okay, so we're here. We look at the next character after, after the active point, which would be the first character of any of these edges. Okay, well, if you have a bunch of edges, how are we looking at any of these edges in linear time? 
or in constant time, sorry. Well, there's a few different ways you can do it. One, you could just have a hash set of the starting characters. Or every node, you could also have an alphabet-sized array. So in this case, we'll say the alphabet is uh, the, uh, the letters of the English language. So that would be an array of size 26. And if the array's first index is 1, you could say, OK, 1 corresponds to A, 2 corresponds to B, 3 is C, so on. You initialize it to zero because there's none of the edges that start with that in the beginning. And then, so as we insert this edge, it starts with the B. So you change B from zero to one or the second index from zero to one. And then you know there's a B. You just go straight to it. Okay, I'm looking for the second letter, uh, A. This starts with A. So when we insert to this edge, we would just increment the first index in that alphabet size array to one. And we know that there is an A edge in there. Okay. So there's a constant way, constant time way we can look up whether an edge is connected to this node. Okay. So we need to look, is A here? Yes, it is. Okay, there's an A here. Do we want to go ahead and insert anything? No, we do not insert a new edge. We don't do anything. We don't decrement remainder because we're not inserting anything. We can't successfully insert yet. The only thing we do is we change the active node. Okay. In this case, we are not changing the, I'm sorry, we change the active point. Typo, active point. We're changing the active point. So active node will stay the same, it's still the root. The active edge, instead of being null, it is now the edge where we were looking to insert, which is A. So this edge. It's whatever edge starts with the, the character that you're trying to insert. We were trying to insert an A, this edge has an A, starts with an A, so this is our edge of interest. And then the active length is now one. In our diagrams, we're gonna denote the active length, uh, the position of the active point with a pipe symbol. So this part of the tree turns into this. So now the active point, instead of being stuck in the root node, is now right after this A, we're right here. Okay, that's it. That's it for step four, let's go to step five. Okay, now I is five. We are looking at the in. So we're trying to insert in and an. Wait a minute. Why are we trying to insert in and an? Well, because we have two remainders. Why do we have two? Well, remember, we didn't decrement the remainder last step because we didn't have a successful insertion. And then also remember that the remainder gets incremented at the beginning of every step. So it was one last step. It didn't turn back to zero, and then at the beginning of this step, it's now two, okay? And those two remainders are the current suffix that we're looking at, which is the character in, and then remember, the current character automatically gets appended to everything. So since we were waiting on the letter A last step, this in automatically gets appended to it. So we're looking to insert an A in from last step and an in for this step. So there's two suffixes we need to insert. However, we go to the active point, root A1. We start from root, we go to edge A, and we go length one, right where our pipe is. And we look at the next character. Is the next character an N? Yes, it is. Well, we do the same as what we did last time. We leave the root the same. We are already on an edge, so we don't need to change that. So now it's, so it stays A, but we change the length to two. So it moves, the active point moves to right after this N. Okay, we don't decrement remainder because we haven't successfully inserted anything and we go to the next step. Step six, the remainder is three, it gets incremented. Three, I is six, so we're looking at the letter A. There are three remainders. Remember, A is automatically appended to everything. Now we're looking, instead of A in, we're looking for A and A. Then the in from last step gets appended with an A. We're looking to insert in A. And we're also looking to insert the letter, the character A. Okay. Look at the active point, root A2. Root, edge A, length two, so we're right where that pipe is. Is the next character an A? Oh no, yeah, it is, okay. Same thing, we're root A, we increment this to three. 
and we do not decrement the remainder. So now this looks like this, active points over here. All right, well, eventually we're gonna have to do something different, right? Now I is seven. We're at a letter S. Finally, a different character. The remainder got incremented at the beginning of the step. Now it's four. We need to insert A-N-A-S, N-A-S, A-S, and S. Remember the S is appended automatically. Okay. So we go to the active node, root A3, root A3. Is the next letter or character an S? It is not. So we can insert an S at the active point, but there's a special way we do that. We're going to split the edge and create an internal, internal node that is going to split A and A and NAS at that active, uh, active point into two separate edges. And it will have two outgoing edges too. Sorry, these two, uh, these two edges. All right, so you'll see, here we go. So A and A, which was what was before the active point, stays coming from the root. I wanna point out that this has nothing to do with the algorithm, but when I drew these diagrams, some of the branches get flipped. So we're looking up here, we're looking at the middle branch, but that turns into this outer branch. Uh, so try not to get too confused. Okay, so we're splitting A and A. A and A stays as the top edge, A and A. We insert an internal node right here that it points to. And then this gets two outgoing edges. One is the continuation of this edge after the active point, NAS, NAS. Notice it still points to the same leaf node. Leaf nodes do not change. No matter what you're doing to the rest of the tree, leaf nodes do not change their values. And why is that? Well, if we follow this down, we have ANA, NAS, and it says it starts at position two. Well, A, N, A, N, A, S, it does. We don't wanna change that. After we've moved this down, we then just insert S. Now we're inserting, inserting the current character S, but notice we're actually going from these remaining suffixes, we're going from the longest to the shortest because we're actually at A, N, A, and now we're inserting an S, and that gives us the A, N, A, S. Okay, ANAS, how did we get this four? Well, obviously ANAS starts at index four, but how do we calculate that? Well, we just look at what step we're on, the value of I is seven, and we just subtract the active length, which is three. Seven minus three is four. And that makes sense because we're at seven, which is where we're ending at this step, and we want something that contains the length of this here before the active point, A and A, which is three, we just subtract it. So it's A and A with that S appended to it. Boom, okay. Okay, well, this is starting to, to build up nicely, let's see. Okay, of course there's something special we have to do now. Since we successfully inserted A and AS, we are still on I7 because we still have a remainder. And we decrement the remainder to three. It was four, now it's three. It was four, now it's three. So we still need to insert NAS, AS, and S. Okay. If we split and inserted an edge that we just did, we have to update the active point. Now there's special occasions whether or not we're at the root or not, but we were at the root. Active node is gonna stay at the root. The active edge becomes the first character of the new suffix we're trying to insert. Well, now we're trying to insert NAS. So we need to move the active node to n, to the edge starting with n, and the active length is decremented by one. So root a3 becomes root n2. And if we go back up here just real quick, we'll see that <clears throat> instead of root a3, because now we're not here anymore, we need to go to root n2. Yes, so root n, and we'll be after n a. So let's see if that's right. Okay, sure enough, root in a, there we are. Still on step seven, so i is equal to seven. We're trying to insert NAS by inserting S 
at root n2. That would give us an nas if we threw an s in here. It is the same as the previous step. We are going to split this guy into two edges and create an internal node, just like we did before. Okay, so let's see. Again, this chart flipped. The graph flipped. We'll just, it was in the middle here, now it's on the outside edge. <clears throat> okay, so NA becomes, just stays right here. We create our internal node, that points to it. The remaining NAS points to a leaf points to this leaf, in fact, that did not change. And then we just insert the edge S coming from this new internal node. And we got this five by taking the length, uh, by taking the, the step seven and subtracting the length, which was two. And now it's, so that gives us this five. Okay. We're gonna decorate, decrement the remainder by one. So now it's two. We have as and S, AS and S left. And then the active point becomes root A1. Okay. Now we have something special we have to do. We just inserted an internal node while splitting an edge, but it was not the first internal node we inserted during this step because we're still on step seven. In this case, we're gonna use a suffix link. We need to insert a suffix link. And you might have noticed at the top from in the very first slide when we had our example, we you saw this dotted line, and that was a suffix link. All that is is a pointer from the previous internal node that we inserted to the recently internal node. And as I just said, we represent it by a dotted line. We're going to see what this does in a minute, but uh, basically, kind of have a notion here, notice that up to this node, the letters A and A, what is a suffix of A and A? Well, it is in A, so this is pointing to a suffix of itself, and that might be important later. So we insert the suffix link whenever it is not the first node that we have inserted that step. <clears throat> okay. Still on step seven, remainders two, active point is root A1. So we're at root, we're at A, uh, we're at one, so it's the A, okay. We're trying to insert AS. Oh, sorry, there we are. I forgot, I advanced. Root A1, we're right here, after the A, okay? Okay, that's the before, the next is the after, okay. <clears throat> we went to the active point to see if the next character is S. It was not. So we have to in turn, uh, insert an internal node and split the edge just like we have done before. So we got A. It splits, becomes NA. Notice that if I go back up, notice that NA pointed, uh, sorry, notice that NA pointed, A points to this node. Sorry, A will point to the new internal node. And then NA will point to this node, this internal node that connects to these leaves. And you see that. So A points to the new internal node and then NA points to the already existing internal node that was pointing to the two leaves. This hasn't changed. None of these have changed. It just changed what these two things are pointing to. And then the other thing we do is insert the S which points at six. Uh, and that, is, again, is the step seven minus the length one, which gives us six. Okay, <clears throat> active point changes from root, changes to root S zero, because the next thing we're gonna try to insert is an S, and the remainder decrements to one. We need a suffix link because we're still on step seven. This is not the first one we've inserted. <clears throat> so now it points from the previous inserted node to the current, to the newly inserted internal node. Okay. All right, still IS7, remainders one, active point is root S0. We're looking at the root, we're looking to insert an S, and the, since the active length is zero, we're looking at the edges, the edges to see if an S exists. Sorry, we're back here. There is not an S. So we will just put an edge for S on our own. Remember this leaf is gonna be uh, the current step, which is seven. 
minus the length, which is zero, so it's seven. That tells us that S starts at seven, and that's true. Okay, we decrement the remainder by one since we just in success, successfully inserted uh, a suffix. Now it's zero. Since it's zero, we reset the active point to root null zero, and we're ready to move on to step eight. All right, step eight. We're now on the letter N. We increment the remainder, remainder equals one. The active point is rule, root null zero, and I equals eight, because we're on step eight. Remember, N is appended automatically to all the letters on here. We check the active point for an N edge, and we see one. It's right here. So we set the active point to root n one, root n length one, okay? And do nothing else. A, okay. Step nine, i is now nine, active point is root n one, remainder is now two, because we didn't successfully insert last time, and now we increment a remainder again, so we're at two. A automatically gets appended to all the leaf edges, all the edges that lead to leaves, okay? We're trying to insert an A, and we see from the, I need to go back up, we see from this that the next letter is an A. But also, we notice that if we're here, we are about, we're at the edge of this edge, we're at the end of this edge, because we're trying to look at the next, when we move this, Sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. We need to look at the next character and see if it's an A. It is. So we do like we've done before. We, we update the active point and we do nothing. We should do nothing else. So it's now root in and it's length two. However, we notice that we're about to fall off this edge. We're at in A and there's nothing after it. So if at the next step we're required to look at what the next character is, we have no next character to look at. So we move the active point to this node and we change the, the active length to zero and the active uh, edge to null. So that means the next time we have to look at edge, we're gonna look at its children, perhaps. We'll see, okay. So now, for the first time ever, instead of the root being the active node, we are now looking at this guy down here. Okay. But other than this change, we're doing nothing else. We change this to be the active point, and that's it. So we go to the next step. Step 10, the final character after this long, think how efficient this thing is. It takes way little time compared to my explanation. I equals 10, remainder is three. We have to insert NA dollar sign, A dollar sign, and dollar sign. The active point is this node, which we're calling X, null, and length zero. The dollar automatically gets appended to all the leaf edges. Do, 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 do. We look at the active point, and since after active length is zero, we look to see if there is a dollar leading out of any edges. And there wasn't. So we just add a leaf node here, this is the newly inserted one, labeled, oh, sorry, edge with a dollar and it's uh, appropriate. Um, oh, this is incorrect. This should be, oh no, this is correct. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this is correct. This is in a dollar and in a dollar starts at position eight, which is this step 10 minus the length which is oh oh sorry it must be the length it's the length up to this point so minus two so 10 minus two is eight okay <clears throat> okay since we successfully have inserted this suffix the dollar the na dollar sign we need to decrement the remainder so now there's only two remainders remaining. Okay, the importance of the suffix link. If we split an edge or added an edge to a node that is not the root, just like we just did. So this is not the root, we just added this edge, dollar sign. 
Then we follow the suffix link and make the node it points to the new active node with no changes to active edge or active length. So this was x null zero. We'll call the node it's pointing to y and we don't change the null or the zero. So now we're at y null zero. Okay, now over here. So remember earlier how we noted that the suffix link pointed to a node that was its own suffix. So here we were at NA, and this is pointing to the letter A, or the edge that's also pointed to by the letter A. Well, this allows us to then go from NA dollar sign straight up to A dollar sign in, in constant time. So we can make our insertion here in constant time. Okay. So I is still 10, remainder is two now, a dollar sign and dollar sign, active point is y null zero, which was down here, remember? There we look at the outgoing edges, there were no outgoing edges with a dollar sign, so we insert an edge with dollar, and this is at position nine. Okay. Since our current active edge is not the root and has no, okay, if it has no suffix length leading, leaving it, if it had a suffix length, just like the previous step, we would have to follow it. However, if there is no suffix link, which there's not, we set the active node to root, but we don't change active edge or active length. It just happens that our active edge and active length happen to be null and zero, but if they weren't, we would leave them where they are. We then decrement a remainder, so there's now one remainder left. I is still 10, remainder is one, the dollar sign, the active point is root null zero. We need to insert a dollar from the active point. So we look at all the edges. None of them start with dollar signs. So we insert a dollar sign edge with a leaf node and it is 10, labeled with 10. The active point is unchanged, remainder is zero. And we, and we would advance to 11, but as we see, there is, well, let me get myself out of the way. As we see, there's nothing after this. And even if there was, we hit our terminating, what we've identified as our terminating character. So we would be finished. Okay. All right. This is going to be in the way, isn't it? So real, really quickly, let's just go through this real quick. We start with some type of step counter, I in this case, which is zero. We have remainder is zero. We have our active point, which is active node, default root, active edge, default null, and active length, default zero. Okay, we create a root node. Then while the string S is not empty, we're gonna do a bunch of stuff while it's not empty, okay? Uh, first we increment steps, so now we're on step one. We increment a remainder, so there's one remaining remainder. Uh, SI is the next character after, we check to see if SI is the next character after, act, after the active point. If it is, and the active length is zero, then the active edge is gonna be the edge that's beginning with that character. And then we just increment active length. If the active point is at the end of an edge, then we need the active node to change to the node the edge is pointing to. This is when our, this is when our, if we were at the root, but then we moved the active node down and it was that red colored node, okay? Uh, active edge is null, active length is zero, okay. If it was not the next character after the active point, well, while the remainder is greater than zero, we are going to check if the active length is equal to zero, then we just create an edge for SI. We create a leaf node with an integer value for I, and then we put a new edge, we point the new edge to the leaf node. And this is, you saw in those last few steps, this would be like when you said, is there a dollar sign? No, and then you just made the edge with the leaf node there. Else, if the length's not zero, we need to split an edge. We're gonna create an internal node and point the active edge to it. The active edge will stop at the active point. For example, if it was A, B, C, D, E, F, and the active point was right here, we're gonna stop this here. Notice that we then, all we have to do to do this is in our start stop indices that we have, for example, like four I here, we replace this variable i with the literal integer for whatever step we're on, and that would be this break right here. Okay, 
uh, create a new edge with what remains after that, DEF. Okay. Da, 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 da. I can't can I move this. Yes. Okay. Move some stuff out of the way. Okay. Okay. We're going to point the new edge to the new node to the node that Active Edge previously pointed to, and we're going to create a new edge, leaving a new node with integer value of i for start and i for end. For end. So, for example, if i was four, then this node would be labeled, or this edge would be labeled four i, as we said at the beginning. Create a new leaf node with integer value of i minus active length, and then we point the new edge to this leaf node. Okay. Okay. Remember, if it's not the first split edge this step, then we're going to create a suffix link from the previous node pointing to the current internal node. That means we did a successful insertion, so we decrement remainder. Decrement remainder. All right, then we check if active node is equal to root, then the active edge is the first letter of the remain next remaining suffix, or null, if for the remainder is zero. And the active length gets decremented, or zero. It doesn't ever go below zero. Okay. Else, if it's not the root, if the node has a suffix link, then our active node, we're going to follow the suffix link. Else, if there is no suffix link, the active node is root. We do this until string is empty. And then we are done. Well, that's interesting. Let's see what we have next. Okay, the time co complexity of Buchanan's algorithm. Okay, to create a node, there's some amount of information stored in them. Uh, we might have that array that points to what edges, labels the edges that are coming out from it, so you can see if they exist. Uh, uh, we have pointers in there, um, but that's all constant. That's all constant amount of information. Uh, so we can, no matter what your node is, it gets created in constant time. The edges are all the same size. They all are just the two um, integer start stop positions, the two indices. So those take constant time to to create. Okay, so they can be created in constant time, any step or sub-step. We are either uh, inserting a single edge in a leaf node, or we're splitting an edge with an internal node in a leaf node, or we're simply updating a variable. All this stuff takes constant time. Each leaf represents a suffix, and there are n suffixes where n is the length of the string. Since there's n leaves, there are at most n internal nodes, n minus one internal nodes, so approximately a total of two n total nodes. So if we need to create two n total nodes and the amount of nodes and the amount of edges, they can all be created. Each of them can be created in constant time. Then we just order one times two n, we get order n. So the time complexity of Buchanan's is order n. Some helpful resources I used while making this. Uh, there's a Stack Overflow by at Stack Overflow post by Jogo J Japan. Uh, there's a link for that. Um, there's also a nifty visualizer uh, by Brendan Kokoska on uh, on GitHub. And uh, you can type in your string, and then it steps through and it shows you the updates of remainder and and uh, the active point for each step. The only the only complaint I have is that the uh, the value of the leaf nodes is not always accurate at the end. Um, and then all the trees in here were drawn with graph is, uh, which was new for me. Uh, yeah, all right, that's my presentation. Thank you.